For more information on tutoring or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, please visit MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So in this video we're going to discuss the Bohr model and its limitations. In 1913, Niels Bohr proposed a model for the hydrogen atom, which is actually a pretty important part of this, that explained the existence of line spectra, which we began to talk about, began to talk about in the previous video. So this is his model here. Basically, keep in mind that it was for the hydrogen atom. That's actually a really important part of this. It's for the hydrogen atom, which is just it's just one one proton and one electron. Okay. So this is his model. So we got the nucleus here with one proton represented by this plus sign. Okay. And then we have the electron here, E minus. Okay. And basically what he said is that we've got the nucleus here in the center. And the electron can be, of course, outside the nucleus. And it travels in specific paths, right, in specific sort of circular paths around the, the nucleus. And there are um, a bunch of different paths. And each of these paths, these circular paths you can see here, um, some are closer to the nucleus and some are further away. We've got these little rings around it. And each of these paths is called an orbit. Okay. And each of these orbits was at a distinct energy level. Which means that the energy of the um the energy here was quantized. Okay. So if an electron is in a certain orbit, for instance, if it's in the n equals one orbit, Anywhere in that orbit, if it's here, or if it's over here, or if it's over here, does not matter. Doesn't matter where it is, as long as it's in that orbit, it's the energy of it is the same anywhere in that orbit. Okay. Now, an, something else that's important is that this electron can be, of course, closer to the nucleus or further away. Right. The closer it is to the nucleus, um, the lower in energy it is. And the further away it is, the higher in energy it is. Okay, so each of these orbits sort of is denoted as n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, you know, and further and on, so on and so forth. It doesn't stop at six. I just stopped at six because I only have so much room. Okay, the the idea was though that as the n value increases, energy increases. Now, why might that be? Well, think about this: the electron is negatively charged, the proton is positively charged. They want to be close to each other, right? So if you try, just imagine trying to pull this electron away. That's going to require energy, right? This, if Once this electron is further away, that's not a situation it really wants to be in. It wants to get back. So that, that, that to get it away would, have to, would require energy. And it's going to be higher in energy if it's further away from where it wants to be. Okay. So... That that hopefully makes sense, right? Because the, the electrons are attracted to the positively charged, the positive charged, positively charged, uh, the positive charge of the nucleus. So they want to be closer, not further. Okay. In fact, if it's if the electron is at the n equals one uh, orbit, then it's considered to be at the ground state, right? And if it's at an n value higher than one is considered to be in the excited state. Okay. Now, what happens here is that let's say this electron, let's say we have um, this electron here. Actually, let's say we have an electron in the n equals three orbit. Okay. I'm gonna draw this in a different color. Let's do uh, let's do purple. So let's say we, like I said, we have one in the n equals three orbit. And it wants to go, or no, it doesn't want to go. Let's say we try to take it to the n equals 5 orbit. Okay. That is going to require energy, right? This requires energy. Okay. So energy, this electron has to absorb energy. So energy is absorbed here because, because it requires energy to get from a lower energy level to a higher energy level. Okay energy is absorbed. Okay. How much energy? It's the amount of energy that is equal to the difference of energy 
at the n equals 3 level and the n equals 5 level. So it's a specific amount, right? The energy absorbed equal to the difference in energy between the two levels. That's specifically how much energy will be absorbed. Okay. On the flip side, if we have an electron maybe out here in the n equals 6 and it wants to come down to the n equals 2, in order to get that to happen, the opposite occurs. Energy is emitted. Energy is released, right? Um, because this is happening, this electron wants this to happen. It doesn't require energy. Energy is released here. Energy is emitted. Again, how much? Specifically, it's equal to the difference in energy between the two energy levels. Okay. okay. Now, um, we mentioned in the previous video um, the different series, right? The UV series, the visible series, and, and the, uh, the IR series. And we said that when M equals 1, or excuse me, when N equals 1, we're talking about the UV series. So that is here, okay? So the UV series. So we're if we're talking about electrons going from outer, outer shells or outer energy levels or outer orbits down to the N equals 1 orbit, that corresponds to the spectral lines uh, in the UV portion. Okay. If we're talking about them coming down to the N equals 2 orbit, that's the visible series. We're talking about the N equals 3, coming down to the N equals 3, that's the IR series. Okay. So, Bohr did a really good job explaining um, this, this model for the hydrogen atom. And it explained the existence of the line spectra that we mentioned in the previous video. So, what was its limitation? The issue was that the only atom, let's write this in white here, the only atom that the Bohr model worked for, or, or works for, is the hydrogen atom. Now, it works for other one electron species, like the ions He+, or lithium 2+, or beryllium uh, 3+. All of these species have only one electron. Right? Helium has an atomic number of two, and if it loses, uh, which means it has two electrons, right? If it loses one of those electrons, it only has one electron. So this model works for anything that only has one electron. For other atoms, though, it does not apply. This does not fit. Okay. And the reason why is that electrons do not follow fixed orbits. Okay. The only atom that this works for is the hydrogen atom. So you might be thinking, okay, so why is this important? Who cares? If this thing is wrong, then why do we even think about it at all? Well, one important thing to take home from, from what's going on with the Bohr model is that, that an atom's energy occurs at specific or discrete levels. That much is definitely true. Now, the exact situation of what's going on uh, is modeled here in the, in the hydrogen atom well, but for other atoms, this is not exactly the case. Um, but this, 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 like I said, this, this, uh, this key point here is true for other atoms, not just for the hydrogen atom. Okay. So I hope that video was helpful in kind of going over the Bohr model and um, why it's, it's not the, the best model for, for atoms. So later we'll see kind of what is kind of going on with the electrons that are um, flowing around the nucleus in other atoms. Hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you, and happy studying.